So you thought that all beard transplants end up successful? No. Oh, hell no. No. Don't worry, because in this video I'm gonna be sharing with you why it is the case and how you can avoid it. I actually got a beard transplant about a year ago, so I know exactly where you are at. You want to have that nice, full-looking beard without patches, which you can trim, present to the world and get a more distinguished look, which can suit your character. You want to look more attractive, more manly, and you want to also hide some imperfections on your skin like pimples, scarring or just weird jawline shape, which honestly so many guys out there have, myself included, obviously, if they would have no beards. Now don't get me wrong, beard transplant is a wonderful thing and I do not regret it at all, but if something goes wrong, it can actually look way worse than before, unfortunately. If you have already done some research on beard transplantation, you probably know that there are two beard transplant clinic or doctor types out there. Now, if you are not familiar, make sure you pay close attention before we actually talk about why these beard transplantation fail, because you need to understand this first. So the first clinic type are doctors or clinics utilizing only neck or chest hair for the actual beard restoration. And they pretty much claim that this type of hair is more similar in terms of texture and structure and oftentimes even color to your actual facial hair and that's the reason why they prefer to use it and I don't really blame them for that because the results I'm actually seeing regularly from these particular clinics are looking very very natural that's the advantage the disadvantage is that they're not good for all the guys especially guys who have no beard to begin with as the amount of such body hair required for that full beard restoration would be super high and most of these guys don't have such chest hair or neck hair reserves great candidates for these types of of clinics are guys who need only small sessions to maybe fill out a patch, guys who wish to achieve results who will only complement their already existing beard, which is maybe like 6 or 7 out of 10 and they want to make it close to like 10 out of 10. A great example of this will be also guys who have been using minoxidil for stimulating more beard growth for quite some time but unfortunately were not able to regrow and define their beard line or achieve that desired shape in their beard. The shape that they would like to have. Now the second type of clinics are doctors or clinics utilizing the scalp hair from the back and sides and these scalp follicles will be transplanted onto your beard. The advantage is that even guys with no beard at all can actually get a full beard. The disadvantage is that restoration of the whole beard line with prevalence of scalp hair can oftentimes lead to permanently over harvesting the donor area. Especially if, number one, too many follicles have been harvested from the donor zone, number two, follicles have been harvested too quickly, and number three, follicles have been harvested without a proper donor area homogenization plan. And here we come to the number one most frequent beard transplant fail. It's pretty much the outline of the newly designed beard line or mustache having this pluggy and robust look which makes it look super unnatural. I mean it's looking sharp but unfortunately sharp in a bad way. You see double and triple follicular units in the beard line especially on the outline of the new beard line and also outline of the mustache. If the newly placed follicles have very high angles Angles, the beard will start sticking out, especially if you start growing it longer. When you shave such beard, it may not solve this problem either. Because after you shave it, the robust looking scalp follicles producing double or triple hairs, they create these bumps around them as a result of having too much skin tissue around the follicle or follicle being just too robust to begin with, like a triple graft. This will cause this unfortunate bumpy scarring, which is also permanent by the way. Obviously, the longer you grow such improperly transplanted beard, the less it will be obvious, especially if the angles are somewhat correct. But if you ever decide to trim your beard or shave it, you will have to get ready for this. Now you came here to learn how to avoid this and how to get the best result. And there are really just three main rules you need to follow to make sure that your beard transplant will look the most natural and most amazing it can look. The rule number one, avoid clinics that routinely practice beard transplants and hair transplants at the same time. Why? Because there is a risk of over harvesting 
and also not enough attention being put on that beard transplantation itself and usually the beard line design will be just half assed and it's just not gonna look natural like for example in this case of beard and hair transplantation at the same time where we might think like hey it actually looked kind of good but the higher we move towards the sideburns area we start noticing some more robust looking follicles and also some signs of cobalt stoning which make it look even more apparent and that's not how a good beard transplantation should look like unfortunately the rule number two avoid clinics with little to no doctor involvement in the procedure by that i mean clinics where the doctor will not do the incisions himself he will not open the channels where the beard follicles or scalp follicles will be inserted if this is not the case avoid this clinic please as this will increase the chance of your beard transplant not looking natural and the rule number three avoid the clinics or doctors where you cannot properly see the after results where it's very hard to detect how that beard also looks when it's trimmed where there are some bumpy scarred regions or not if you cannot tell avoid that clinic please so make sure you double check that and now if you enjoyed watching this video you need to watch this one next as it talks about five most important things you need to know about before you get a beard transplantation and some secrets i haven't revealed in this video so go check it out as this is one of my most watched beard transplant related videos on the channel so if you want to maximize your beard transplant success go check it out now and see you there